Welcome to this brief introduction to Bitcoin supply dynamics for directional traders. Today we're going to focus on supply metrics and rather than jumping straight into the more complex side of things, I want to talk about how we can actually understand and utilize supply metrics in their most basic form from a directional trading perspective. So in the realm of supply dynamics, there are a number of essential questions that we should be asking ourselves. And for this video, I want to run through these questions and also run through how they can be answered using the metrics that we're going to touch on. Because for momentum and directional traders, they can really be quite powerful when it comes to analyzing the underlying strength or weakness of the trends that we see in the market. So you can think of this video as a simple checklist for when you're looking at supply dynamics. What are the right questions to ask and what are the metrics and tools that you'll need to find the answers? We've also condensed this into a PDF with some additional analysis and also some historical examples which you can download below. So to kick things off, one of the first questions that we can ask regarding supply is what percentage of the total supply is active versus dormant? And by analyzing this, we can gain an insight into the market's readiness for movement as high activity levels often precede market volatility. It can really serve as somewhat of a precursor for larger price moves. One metric that we can use to answer this question of activeness versus dormancy is the Bitcoin young versus old supply. And this essentially helps us visualize the percentage of Bitcoin supply that is old and hasn't moved within the last six months, which we can see here in the blue, against this more active supply that has moved within the last six months, seen here in red. And the second question really focuses more on the characteristics of this active supply here, because out of all of the coins that are moving or being spent, we want to know if there has been a recent shift in the age of coins that are being moved and becoming active. There are a few metrics that we could look into to answer this, such as coin days destroyed, as well as the one that we have in front of us here, which is the realized cap hodl waves. The idea here is that we're able to identify the movement of older coins, which often signals a shift in long term holder activity, and also highlights the correlation between older coins being spent in the run up to these market extremes, where we typically see a much higher percentage of younger coins that have recently become active. Turning our focus to the short term holders, we also want to ask is short term transactional activity increasing or decreasing compared to long term holding? If we see a rise in short term transactions over long term holdings, then it may hint that there's an increased interest in trading or just in the market in general, and more potential for a buildup of momentum, whereas a decrease in short term transaction activity could signal more of a consolidation phase. One of the go to metrics for insights around this is transfer volume by short term holders. Another aspect that we can focus on is supply and exchange interaction. One of the key questions here being, has there been an increase in supply moving to or from exchanges? So when we're examining the flow of coins moving to and from exchanges, it helps us not only anticipate price pressure, but also the direction of this pressure. If we're seeing a ton of inflows, then that may hint that there's a readiness in the market for a sell off. Whereas if we're seeing a surge of outflows, it may point towards heavier accumulation, which in turn could lead to more of an upward price trend. The exchange net position change, which is the metric that we have in front of us here, is a great place to start for more of a holistic view regarding supply and exchanges. You can also delve into the inflows and outflows individually, or use the balance on exchange metric to monitor balances more directly. Last, but definitely not least, we have to consider the angle of profit and loss, where we can ask ourselves quite simply, is the total supply currently more in profit or more in loss? This can really act as a great sentiment indicator, because when we're talking about the profitability status of the supply, we can get a real sense of the market's participants and whether or not they're in profit or underwater on their investments. So with that in mind, if we're seeing a supply that is largely in profit, then we need to be aware that it can pose sell off risks, as it may prompt investors to lock in those profits, which in turn could affect the market's momentum. Whereas a majorly loss bearing supply would suggest that investors are holding coins that heavily in the red, which can also hint that the market could well be gearing up for a recovery rally, which we have seen here before. So a key metric for insight on this topic is percent of supply in profit. Again, this is a great place to start as from here, we can even work our way down into short term and long term holder versions of this metric, if you wanted to take a more granular view into those investor groups. So that's everything that we're going to cover for this video, folks. But if you want this checklist of questions and all of the relevant metrics that can be used to answer them, which is a great resource for those who are looking to capitalize on trends before they're becoming obvious to the wider market, then you can download it in PDF form using the link below.